Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the motion of our solar system across the galaxy. It's a topic that many other YouTubers have done as well and it's a topic that I've also covered on the channel previously but this time we're going to do this a little bit more realistically in terms of the actual inclinations of the Sun, the Earth and so on. In other words, we're going to try to recreate the motion of our entire solar system relatively realistically using Universe Sandbox. Let's try this and welcome to What The Math. Now you might have seen a lot of other YouTube videos where the motion of the sun is presented across the galaxy as a kind of a um, simulation that you see on the screen right here, although I'm yet to see at least one of these videos where the actual inclinations and the actual positioning of the planets and of course the star is accurate. However, this animation is relatively accurate, although the angles are not really presented. So let's try to recreate this using the newly updated Universe Sandbox where the galaxies do look quite interesting and quite beautiful. So first of all, we need to start with the distance of where the Sun is located compared to the uh, central region of the galaxy and of course compared to the Sagittarius A star black hole right there in the middle. And the common analysis suggests that the distance here is roughly around 25 and a half thousand light years away from the black hole. This number might change in the future and it has changed in the past, but right now we believe it's around 25 and a half thousand. So we're going to place our sun uh, somewhere in one of these arms at a distance of uh, just over 25 and a half thousand light years. And so here it is, at a distance of 25 and a half thousand light years, Sagittarius A star black hole is right there in the middle, and this is the so-called Milky Way. But the problem here is that the Sun actually doesn't spin in the same plane as the galaxy. As a matter of fact, when the Sun spins, the North Pole of the Sun points this way, and it forms um, an angle of roughly around 60 degrees with the so-called galactic plane. In other words, we're going to have to take our sun and make it rotate by roughly around um, 60.2 degrees. And so right here you can kind of see how the sun spins almost on the side as it travels in this direction across the galaxy. So if we were to zoom out, this is sort of what it looks like on the larger scale of things. And the sun is going this way, while its north pole, also known as the north ecliptic pole, is pointing that way. And the angle right here between the galactic plane and the uh, ecliptic plane, or the plane of the Sun, is roughly around 60.2 degrees. And so technically to see the planet spinning now, we have to kind of spin our head 60 degrees, but this is not it. This is actually not the end of the complexity because the planets also don't spin on the same plane as the plane of the solar rotation. In other words, there's still a little bit of a difference between the rotation of the sun and also the plane where the planets are. So now we're going to add a little bit of complexity to this. And likely for us, planet Earth is the easiest planet to start with here because it actually lies in the same plane um, of orbit as the so-called ecliptic plane. In other words, the angle between the orbit of Earth and the galactic plane is roughly around 60.2 degrees as well. However, as Earth orbits the Sun, it orbits on this so-called ecliptic plane and luckily for us it is almost zero degrees. But the rotational axis of Earth is shifted, as you can see, by roughly around 23.4 degrees, and this is why we get seasons. So it does get a little bit more complicated because now we have to obviously uh, rotate our Earth a little bit to give it that 23.4 degree rotation of axes. And so now we have three so-called Norths. We have the ecliptic North, which is formed by the Sun and the um, solar plane itself. We have the galactic north, which is formed by the galaxy and it's up, as you would call it here in this simulation. And lastly, we have the celestial north, which is formed by Earth and it's pointed slightly differently as well. The angle between the um, celestial north or Earth north and the galactic north is roughly around 63 degrees. The angle between Earth and the Sun is 23 degrees and lastly the angle between the sun and the galactic plane is about 60 degrees. Here's a brief summary of all of this and yeah it does get kind of complicated. This is probably why most of those YouTube simulations weren't really able to simulate all of this together. Now this is just for Earth, right? We have seven other planets and if I did all seven planets this video would probably be about an hour long. 
Maybe one day we'll do that, but not today. Today we're just going to cheat and place all of them by placing all of the eight planets, starting with the terrestrial planets, in a relatively similar plane to Earth. We're not going to bother with the actual spin right now because it's not really that important. We just want to see how all of this moves across the galaxy. Later on, maybe we'll do this a little bit more realistically. So this is what we're going to do. So here we need to try to align everything with what we have. This is kind of what all of this will look like. So Jupiter now is in the same plane as other planets and is going to be moving this way just as it does in real life. Let's do the same for the remaining three planets to make this beautiful solar system inclined as it should be uh, with approximately 60 degree inclination to the galactic plane and with all of the objects moving as they should be moving. So now we're going to run the simulation. Also, let's enable trails here so you can actually see what all of these planets will be doing as they move around the sun. So this right here is a lot more realistic in terms of the inclinations, in terms of the actual positioning of the planets, and in terms of the actual motions around the galaxy. So in reality, this is what all of this looks like with the sun obviously spinning on its side with a 60 degree inclination. Now, um, all of this is actually kind of fun to try to recreate in Universe Sandbox, and all of this looks super amazing with the new update. There is, however, one problem with the new update, and this is something that Universe Sandbox is not going to be able to resolve anytime soon, because the dark matter is no longer here. And if we look at the time it takes for the sun to orbit a single time around the galaxy, basically the so-called galactic year, it is unfortunately going to be a little bit off. Here it says it's about 85 million years. In reality, it's close to about 220 million years. And um, until we can actually find a way to simulate galaxies using both dark matter and regular matter, we're not going to be able to create anything super realistic. But for now, it's not really that important. This is what the important part is. This is what all of this looks like as the solar system moves around the galaxy and as it flies through our beautiful Milky Way. So in one of the future videos, we'll try to create this even more realistically, possibly even adding the actual axial tilts to every planet and maybe even adding moons. But honestly, this is going to really slow down my computer dramatically. And I honestly feel like this is already quite enough. So this is the real solar system as it moves through the galaxy. And I'm going to save this as one of the mods that you can download from Universe Sandbox using Steam with the name Real Motion of the Solar System Through the Galaxy. It's going to be shared on Steam so you can download it and try this for yourself and maybe even improve on it or add more details. So if you have Universe Sandbox, feel free to download it and try this for yourself. Anyway, so on this note, that's kind of it. That's all I wanted to do in this particular video. But like I said, we're going to expand on this and try to make it a little bit more complex in some of the future videos. So do subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.